Today, we're talking about the rhetorical analysis prompt. We've been working on rhetorical analysis for several weeks now. Now it's time to show how much you learned from lectures, discussions, and readings. The rhetorical analysis essay is worth 150 points. A rhetorical analysis asks you to examine not just what a text says, but how it says it. Think back to the acronym I gave you earlier in one of the other lectures, SPACE. That stands for the situation, the audience, and the purpose behind a writing and the claims and the evidence used in the writing. When you write an introduction for a rhetorical analysis for my class, I ask that you include the situation, the audience, and the purpose in the introduction to provide context or background information for your reader. Never assume that the reader has read what you've read. Your job is to provide enough information in your introduction for your reader to follow the logic of your argument. In the course of your argument in the body of the paper, you will discuss some of the original author's claims and evidence as part of your proof about the effectiveness of the author's argument. You will examine rhetorical devices, including but not limited to ethos, pathos, and logos. You can use all three, but you must use at least one of these to demonstrate your understanding. Your thesis statement is thus. You display the topic, which in this case is the article and the author, your slant in a rhetorical analysis, that is whether or not it is effective or ineffective, and the claims you are making. An example of this would be Joe Goodwin Parker wrote What is Poverty, in which she writes an effective argument based on her credibility her emotional appeals, and her logic. That's the type of thesis I'm looking for. You can review the thesis slides or any of the past discussions we've had about writing a rhetorical analysis to see what I'm looking for. Also check the announcements. I think there's a sample outline in one of them. You are writing on one source document. So while I list the sources here, you are choosing one to write about. You can choose what is poverty, letter from Birmingham jail, or the video, the danger of a single story. You're to write an essay that answers this question. Is the author's argument effective or ineffective? And how does the author's use of rhetorical devices, such as the appeal to ethos, logos, and pathos, add to the effectiveness or ineffectiveness. Again, if you focus on the content, you are on the wrong track. We have been trained since we were kids to tell the teacher what we read. Now you're going to demonstrate your critical thinking by talking about how. You're going to analyze how the original author makes their argument. You then use evidence from the text in the form of direct quotes or summaries to prove your claims. You're graded on organization, which means it's driven by your thesis. You have your thesis underlined. Your topic sentence is the first line of every body paragraph. That's organization. 20% is on depth and development. One of the biggest things I see students do here to lose points is straying from their focus. If you say the focus is on ethos or credibility of the author and you start talking about um, their illogic, the, the fact that they're illogical, you're straying into logos and you're going to lose points in development because you're not maintaining your focus. Depth and development is also where you demonstrate your logic. You present an idea or um, premise in your topic sentence, and the development portion is the evidence and the explanations that you give for the evidence to explain to the reader the way you're interpreting the quote or the summary. 
and that you somehow reach a conclusion about the effectiveness with each body paragraph. Clarity of writing is worth 20%. The two most common errors that cost students point, points here are changing tenses or using personal pronouns. Changing tenses happens frequently when students start in first per, or not first person in present tense and move to past tense. Typically, we write formal academic essays in past tense. I'm not particularly choosy. However, you do have to stay in the tense that you start with. The other place that students lose points here is by using personal pronouns. This is an, a formal essay, so you're required to avoid personal pronouns like I, you, we, me, my, so no I thinks. Rhetorical analysis is worth 20%. If you write a summary or you start talking about the content and instead of talking about Joe Goodwin Parker, you start talking about poverty, you are straying. You are not writing a rhetorical analysis. That's 20% of your grade. So the highest score you could get if everything else were perfect is 80%. So make sure you focus on how the author is making their argument. Make sure that your introduction provides context by discussing the situation, the audience, and the purpose. MLA is worth 10%, and I do have another video for that. Grammar and mechanics are worth 10%. The requirements are between 600 and 1,000 words. And remember what I said in lecture, if you're writing 600 words, you are probably writing a C paper at best because it is hard to write an analysis in so few words. You are required to use MLA formatting with Times New Roman 12 font. A rough draft is required and has a separate folder. You are also required to do peer review, and that will cost you 10% of your score if you don't participate in peer review. A works cited page is required. If you turn in a paper that does not have a works cited page, it is an automatic zero because it is an example of plagiarism. You're also required to use in-text citations for direct quotes and paraphrases. Remember, with in-text citations, run a find through your whole document before you turn it in, search for a quotation mark, and at every point where you see quotations, make sure it has an end quotation and an in-text citation before you turn it in. Last thought, before turning into the Dropbox, make sure you proofread and run spell check. The back side of the prompt is for you to give you strategies for how to write an effective analysis. The things that I have highlighted are key. If you've forgotten or were absent when we talked about rhetorical analysis, this gives you a place to start. Also look at past announcements and videos. Your focus is on how the original author makes an argument. Your position will be about the effectiveness of the author, the, how effectively the author argues, not your personal stand on the issue. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions.